Well, hello, Celebration family. Once again, we gather together around God's Word. Well, we have been talking about homecoming and the importance of having a home, having a home to come to. And the house of God is the home where the Spirit of God dwells. I'm always so amazed at how God's presence seems to dwell in the church, in the very place where the worship of God goes up and where the praises of God and the prayers of God's people uh, begin to go up into the atmosphere. And I really believe that it makes a huge difference when God's presence is birthed in a place and it, it, it radiates out from so many people who gather together. It's so much different than being at home or being uh, in, in some other place. But when you come into the house of the Lord, oh, the presence of God always meets us there. And we are excited about this whole idea of homecoming and our theme uh, that hope happens here. And this is a place where the hope of God really emits from the hearts of God's people. And we are excited about what God is doing in our lives and in the lives of those who know him. And even what he is doing in regards to redeeming us from this lost and dying world. And today we have our children's director, uh, Jorge Maldonado with us, and it's always exciting to have him. Amen. And uh, it's always great, so <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. And um, he's gonna share some things that God has put on his heart regarding this topic. Hallelujah, so Amen. welcome, brother. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Shelley. Once again, thank you for having me, and excited as we go into this topic and theme of homecoming, right? Hope happens here. We're talking about the sanctuary, the temple, the place where God meets us, and you know, just thinking of homecoming, I know we've discussed this, you've brought it up and mentioned it about right. homecoming. You know, right. there's a, it's a time of celebration when we think about homecoming, whether yes. it's on the football field yes. or as a player being prepared to uh, go on the field. When you think of homecoming, I remember just my uh, time while I was in the Coast Guard, mm -hmm. uh, there was always a time of homecoming as I was deployed. Right. And it was always exciting knowing that you were going to come home, pull into port after months of being deployed right. and waiting for people to, or having people wait for you, right. you know, to embrace you yeah. and to love you yeah. and to, you know, just welcome you home. And I just find that so important relative to today in the church, how it's important for that. Right. And I feel that we could find that we do find that here in this house of hope our home here right. in the church right so I want to just kind of go through uh, David we all know about David and uh -huh. we all know how you know he has um, you know he he fled you know he fled from many people he, he was fleeing because his life was in danger and he always found you know uh, refuge in the house of the Lord uh, as we read, you know, that in scripture. So if I would just want to share here, Psalm 27, one through six, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? We're familiar with this verse. A lot of us are familiar, right? right? Yeah, David's encouraging us. He's encouraging himself. Who shall yeah. I fear? You know, the light, you know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. What an awesome, encouraging word there just to start us off. When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. And I just want to stop there really quick because David had something special. We all know David was a man after God's own heart. Scripture yeah. tells us that. Yeah. But yeah. one thing that I desire of David is to have the confidence that David had. Yeah. David had confidence in yeah. God and, and what he provided for him. Right. He provided uh, shelter, you know, even though he was being... Uh, uh, chased by a host, right? Or they were after his own flesh, as he right. says it here. Right. You know, who could come against me? So even though war arose him, there is still confidence in him. And that is encouraging to me. And I pray that's encouraging to others, that we would have confidence in our Lord and in our Savior as we seek refuge. Because he goes on to right. verse 4, <clears throat> says... 
one thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. And this, I just find it awesome, you know, because obviously there wasn't a church or a temple on every corner right? <laughs> in the middle of the desert, right? right? right. I mean, there wasn't That's just right. a temple or, right. or a house of, of God, but, but he knew, he recognized, he understood what it was to be in the presence of God, right. in the midst of God. As you were opening, Pastor, you were saying, you know, that, you know, we are here to receive from God, but there's an opening where people receive you with warmth, with love, the love of God. And, you know, David found that in the temple. He found that, he, he mentions the temple, he also mentions the tabernacle as we see here, for in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. There's refuge, yeah. there's comfort yeah. in Absolutely. the secret place of his tent. Yeah. So temple, tabernacle, tent, right. you know, right. uh, he will hide me, he will lift me up on a rock. Praise God, Such in, so encouraging. And now my head will be lifted up. Here comes confidence above my enemies around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices right. with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. And this is such yeah. an awesome thing because it yeah. wasn't necessarily a building or a structure, but right. knowing that right. he found refuge, he found comfort, he found security. Right in the presence of God, whether it be in a tent or in a temple, or we, you know, we know that the, the, the temple or the tabernacle was not yet built, but he knew what was coming. He knew that that experience of being able to find comfort, love, and joy in that, knowing that it was a presence of God is encouraging to me, you know? And, uh, you know, this last weekend, or yeah, this last weekend, we, we just came back from our Ignite Retreat, you know, right. our preteen Ignite Retreat. Right. And it was such an awesome thing. And, you know, I know many of many of the members of the congregation supported and prayed, and we thank you for that. And I, and I want to bring this up because, you know, our preteens, 10, 11, 12 year olds, right? right? We weren't in the church building, mm -hmm. but we were in a place and right. they found joy. Yeah. There was the theme of the, of, the, uh, of the retreat was a joyful encounter. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that our children had a joyful encounter. Why? Because we were in the presence of God. Right. They were worshiping. They found comfort. Yeah. They found refuge. Right. They found security. Right. And right. not only in the midst of us as leaders and those that were helping us to, to help them and to comfort them and right. to encourage them, but in the midst of God in the midst of his presence yeah. and it was definitely something that it, it wasn't in a tabernacle mm -hmm. but it was in a place so therefore we could find his presence anywhere right anywhere yeah. it's so true you know when i'm just listening to what you're saying right. you know it's the place where you gather but you're not alone it's right. not just you in right. fact jesus said where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'm in the midst of them. Right. It's the idea of there's this gathering right. of this place where worship can take place. And it's a it's a designated place where we go to worship God together. Uh, in the presence of God, we gather and the, the worship of the Lord. You know, he says he seeks after, the, the verse said. Right. He seeks after, you know, and we have to learn how to seek yes. after God. Yes. Yes. to really invest, you know, in in the worship of the Lord, in the acknowledging of God. Like you said, the tent or the tabernacle, you know, these are places that are designated areas or places that are for the purpose of worshiping God. And he says, I will sing, right? In verse six, I will, right. sing. I will sing. I will sing praises to God. You know, we should all sing. We have something yes. to rejoice yes. about. You know, uh, we, we want to worship the Lord out of our heart, you know, and I'm sure he didn't pull out a songbook <laughs> and start singing, right? You no. know, but in the he, he was singing based on what his experiences Experience, yes. were in yes. God. He made a song up out of what he, what he saw God do in his life. And 
I pray that that's something that we would all do, that we would make up songs out of the experiences we've had in God, that we would be singing psalms and yes. hymns and spiritual songs yes. unto yes. God. Those are yes. songs written by others exper yes. through their experiences, and then the songs we write ourselves through our own experiences. And that is what makes David such an awesome worshiper. It's that he recognized what God was doing in his life. Amen. And, and sang about it. And he sang about it. And now yeah. he's here encouraging us, right? Right. And, you know, one thing I wanted to bring up is that is dear to my heart because I think you opened up with this. You know, we talk about a home should be a place of refuge, a place where, right. you know, you may feel accepted. And, right. you know, as a children's director or preteen director, you know, I, I'm close to words as to what kids may say or what I hear. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I hear, you know, things like, I don't want to go home. Right. You know, you hear things like yeah, that out of children true. or maybe even, you know, adults. I don't want to go home. Why? You know, because yes. maybe there's yes. some sort of, uh, of trouble or there's something that's not right within the home. Right. The atmosphere, you know, the atmosphere is different. Is Therefore, different. the experience is different. It's different. It's different. Right. And they don't desire. I experienced that growing up as a yeah. kid. You know, I yeah. there was many a times. I yeah. mean, when I left to the Coast Guard, I left because I didn't want to be home. You know, I love my family, love my right. parents. I know they love me, but it was right. the atmosphere. Right. And so right. the atmosphere right. with the presence of God yeah. is the opposite. It's Absolutely. a place that brings you uh, right. comfort, refuge, you know, security and yeah. love where we yeah. can rejoice and right. sing psalms right. unto God. And right. David was obviously here. He was alone. But man, the, the, the power that we have when there's others surrounding us, yes. you know, and the yes. comfort that brings us. Yes. So there should be a celebration in mm -hmm. our homecoming. Yes. There should be an excitement for us to right. come and call this place our home. Yeah, I love what you said, you know, you just made me think again, you know, of just how the people are waiting for you. They are they are to greet you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I think of how uh, when my kids were little and I used to come home from work and I used to work long, long days, right. you know, and uh, commuting and everything. And by the time I got back home, the kids would be almost ready for bed, but they would hear me coming yeah, in the yeah, door and they'd be excited. Yeah. They were like, oh, that is home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they would often run to meet me at the right. door, right. you know, yeah. and uh, and that's that's a homecoming. It is. Yeah. You know, and that's what the house of God Amen. is like, you Amen. know, if you're a backslider or you're yes. somebody who drifted away or for right. whatever, you know, you got caught up in the challenges of life and you fell away from attending church or being a part of, of the body, right. you know, it, there's not criticism waiting no. for you. There, There's not condemnation waiting for you. It's the love of God that's yes. waiting for yes. you. It's it's the joy of a hope filled group of people that are waiting for you. And so when you come back, we rejoice. Amen. We're glad to Amen. see you. We're so grateful. Yes. We're so thankful that you made it back because not everyone makes it back. The enemy sometimes ruins people yes. and, and they don't make it. And we're just so grateful from one week to the next even to see people because of the hope that, that is burning within us all. Amen. And, you know, as you say that, obviously, you know, you can think of the prodigal son, right? Mm -hmm. The parable of the prodigal son. And we think of that in the celebration. Right. But that's such right. an awesome thing, you know, and I, and I would just want to end with this, you know, again, in Psalm 16, 10 through 11. Here, David, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. 11 says you will make known to me the path of light in your presence is fullness of joy Hell. in your right hand there are pleasures forever and i wanted to put this script this verse in these verses in here because here he's talking about death after death right. and david found so much comfort whether he was physically alive in the presence of god yeah. right in the temple in the tabernacle right. or even after death he knew right. that no matter where he was in the presence of the lord right. there would be joy hallelujah there would be joy amen that so is the truth. i would end with that hallelujah <laughs> praise god amen. well we're so thankful for what god is doing in the midst of our lives amen. and we're so thankful for for God's uh, bringing us to a place of hope yes. and yes. love yes. and joy and peace and patience and kindness. Yes. 
And that's why hope happens here, right? That's why we have this thing that, that says, you know, that we are in a place of homecoming, a place we can come home to, a place where God's glory abides, His presence abides, and all of the attributes of God abide in the midst of us. And that's what awaits you when you come to the house of the Lord. I encourage you all to come home. Yes. Come home. Come to the homecoming in the house of God. Come into the presence of God. The presence is strong. Why? Because so many of God's people are gathered together uh, in His name with the heart of, of God, with the desire like David, with, with a, a willingness to worship and, and praise God, to honor Him, to lift Him up, to exalt His name, to bring glory and honor to Him. I pray that you are coming home. I pray that you appreciate the opportunity to come into the house of the Lord and enjoy His presence. Be liberated. Be set free because hope happens here.